Cognitive neuroscience is a mixture of neuroscience, computer science, and psychology, which arose to study the relationship between brain areas and functions, and their relationships with learning, memory, and other aspects of cognition. It tries to understand the biological underpinnings of complex cognition and offer a mechanical explanation of cognition. Based on everything from gene expression to larger neural networks within the brain. In layman's terms, it basically wants to tell us what does what and how areas are connected within the brain. Brain mapping. Due to ethical concerns, and the ability to actually experiment on live human brains, mapping of the human brain was originally based on the study of animal brains, and extrapolating what we learned to the human brain. This was a very limited method to study any details outside of the more basic functions of the brain, as the cognitive processes of animals pale in comparison to humans so learning which parts of the brain are associated with which cognitive functions was not a definitive process or study. So, the mapping of the brain cognition was left to chance by studying people with existing brain traumas to specified regions of the brain and correlating those with cognitive deficits. Although this was not the most efficient way to study our brain, over time it still managed to give us a pretty good overall representation of which areas of the brain were responsible for certain cognitive functions. With the advent of neuroimaging technology, and the introduction of the CT scan in 1973, we began to be able to study the structure of the brain in a living human. Then in 1979, the MRI gave us an even better and more detailed image of the brain, which was able to reveal anomalies within a brain and relate those to cognitive function. However, it was in 1991, with the introduction of the fMRI, that allowed cognitive neuroscience to take a huge leap forward. For the first time, we were able to measure, in real time, the blood flow levels of the brain which represent actual changes in the metabolic functioning of the brain. For the first time, we could actually confirm the cognitive functions of the different regions of the brain as they were happening.